We have a saying around here. Oh yeah? Yeah, no brains, no headache. <laughs> <laughs> well, hello, boys. What's up? What's up? Damn, son, where'd you find this? Welcome to No Brains, No Headache Podcast, episode 180. The date of the release is December 12th, 2023, to give you a frame of reference as our loyal listeners of what the hell we're going to talk about and what the hell are we going to talk about. I don't know. We're going to find out. My name is Jordan Weichel. I'll be your host today. Happy to be here. Damn glad to do it. And as always, I'm joined with uh, my good friend. All right. I keep this guy around. Keeps me, keeps me you know, humming every day. Makes me laugh every once in a while. Some say he may have something wrong with him. I don't know. That's TBD Matt Cleary. How are you today, buddy? Good. I have an earache, which I found out as an adult sucks. Yeah, earaches, I don't think it matters what age uh, you have an earache. They are not very great. But I like I have an earpiece in at work, and so I have to have it on the other side. Ooh. And so that's, I feel like off balance, like my typing's kind of off. I'm leaning all over the place. You know, athletes adjust, man. Yeah. So I did not adjust. You're just going to have to, you know, figure it out. Did you have anything in your stocking at work? Uh, I didn't look. Okay. Um, but this morning I did take a call from my mother at like 8.05. She's like, what are you doing? I'm like, just kind of woke up. She's like, what time do you have to be at work? And I was like, Eight. <laughs> About five minutes ago. <laughs> yeah. Don't worry, I got there on time. Hey, you know what? Like I said, uh, with my little venture, Mondays are, you know, essentially optional. You know, just get what you can done. Don't work too hard. You got the whole week ahead of you. You know? That's what the rest of the week is for. It is true. Whoever came up with the forty hour work week model, I just I don't know. I think it's a little outdated. Oh, uh, every other country works like 30 hours tops we need to be like the spaniards okay we need to start late we need to go home for a siesta work later in the night and then party at the end of the night was, every night i was talking to a british guy and he was like oh yeah with i just got a new job and it starts out with 40 pto days a year do that's just what you start with yeah it's like, all right, I'll see you guys in a month and a half. <laughs> Thank you for the job. See you later. <laughs> yeah. Can I just use that all right now? You like start in November and you're like, yeah, I've got to do it before the end of the year. So you'd be like, see you in January. That wouldn't be too bad. You know, just have the last month of the year paid off. You know, I, I did see a tweet the other day of, oh, it was pretty funny, of it's kind of a confused kid looking and the caption was like me trying to figure out like how to, make money without working <laughs> it's like yeah that's yeah, i just posted that, that clip on tiktok today of uh which you can follow us at mbnh podcast all social media platforms it's of uh dr evil saying release the meteor and he just gets drilled in the nuts and it's like being an adult <laughs> yeah uh it's just you know we we are still in route to not being 20 in our 20s anymore yeah <laughs> And not a lot has changed from 21 to 29. I, you know, I was super optimistic in the months leading up, you know, like you have the connotation of getting old. And I'm like, whoa, whoa, no, no, no. I am just entering my prime. As we are counting down, I'm getting more and more scared. I'm scared. I don't know why I'm so scared, but I'm scared. Oh, my level of caring has just gone down. See, and that's, that's what I'm scared about. It was just like... You know, at one point, there's just not going to be any cares left. Yeah, Jordan, what are you doing for your birthday? Who cares? Yeah. <laughs> You're like Cameron from Ferris Bueller. Let my Cameron go. I was thinking more like uh, Owen Wilson and Wedding Crashers. <laughs> just has his answering machine. He's just like, leave a message or whatever. <laughs> I don't care. We, so we actually had a busy week of uh, going to bars. and well. <laughs> uh, well, well, like, I haven't seen people get kicked out of bars too often. Oh, yes. And there was a couple doozies this week. So Wednesday, we're at a bar doing open mic night. And this guy who's just tweaking out comes in with a skateboard. It's December in North Dakota. 
and he had, goes up to the bar, and one thing leads to another. He starts kind of getting mad and gets kicked out because they said that they he had he can't like have a skateboard apparently. Yeah, but That's he also rule. was like being kicked out of every bar, and then that bar manager would go to the next bar and tell him like, "Yeah, we just kicked that guy out," and then it just kept going bar to bar to bar, and pay it forward. Yep. At the real pay it forward in North Dakota when you tell other bar managers that you just kicked out a tweaker. But he's finally getting kicked out and he's like finally agreed to leave because he just started like yelling at some point and he's holding a skateboard and goddamn Dayton, one of the comics, just goes, do a kickflip. And the guy like stops and puts his skateboard on the ground and, <laughs> and they're like, whoa, whoa, whoa. And then that led to like a huge like this guy pushes him out the door and like everyone runs outside. Cops get called them like, I got to interject here. I think I, because I was on my way out and on my way out, I said you should do a kickflip. And then I think Dayton was just reiterating okay. my suggestion. <laughs> so it was. And, but I did it on uh, for that exact reason because I was like, this idiot is dumb enough to actually do it. And then, you know. So what I was blaming on a poor young comic was actually your fault. <laughs> I definitely walked by. I was like, dude, you know any tricks? Like, what do you got? <laughs> Damn it, Jordan. <laughs> but that it's was pretty entertaining. I mean, it, yeah, I mean, it was, <laughs> well, yeah, I guess. But the funny one was on Friday night, and there was this guy wearing, like, a construction coat that's, like, neon yellow. Yes. and Very noticeable. And he falls asleep at the bar, just <laughs> gets kicked out for that. He comes back in and he's like wandering around. And then finally someone notices like, dude, you've been kicked out. You got to get out. And we're like, wow, that was crazy. And I texted someone. And I was like, this guy just got kicked out for the second time. After I send that text, lo and behold, the guy comes in for a third go at it. Yeah. He was trying to go uh, take a nap on the toilets yeah. in the bathroom for sure. He's going for a toilet nap. Uh, got to respect it. I mean, my friend Brett did that in Vegas. <laughs> um, so did Elvis. That's not well. That's a toilet death nap. But and so the third time comes in, and at this point, like patrons of the bar are the ones kicking him out. Yeah, there was a whole on. Um, what do you call those? Just militia. Yeah, there was a there was a bar militia forming of play of people playing bingo on a Friday. Not even wait. It was like six o'clock. This guy had been booted four times. Came in the other time, and then at this point, there's, like, a conglomerate of good, customers. Good word. Just kicking this guy out, gets picked up by the cops, and it's like, it really took that guy four times? What's your policy, or what are your thoughts on, you know, napping in the bar area? I don't know if I've ever fallen asleep. I mean, I probably have. I'm not don't. saying you personally. Say you own a bar. What's your nap policy going to be? Um... I'd prefer it if they didn't, but if they're not like, I, think, I mean, it's different if they're shit face drunk. Well, then yeah. How else are they napping? I don't know. Oh, maybe you just went in and you just kind of sleep like sleep apnea, just fell asleep like a narcoleptic wiener dog. Yeah. Whatever it's called. Narcolepsy. Yeah, totally. That's definitely what I said for sure. Um, I think my bar policy, it's going to depend on the time of the day. And the time of the day wasn't really helping that particular person's cause because it was definitely starting to get busy. You know, I could see the classic TV show movie dark, you know, smoky bar scene where it's like, hey, you come here every day. I appreciate your business. You don't really cause a scene. It's pretty fucking dead right now. Why don't you take a little fucking bar nap? Your neck's going to be sore and that's not going to be my issue. But I think that's where my policy would come into play. In the instance that we experienced, I think, you know, the bar ultimately did the right thing. It's just a bad look, especially the neon guy. You oh, know, yeah, if he yeah, wasn't wearing that, yeah, change he would have blend your, right in. Yeah, change your coat if you're going to try take a couple, two, three, four passes at getting into the bar. Yeah, that's a, that's a brutal um, situation to be in. You know, he's just trying to catch a couple Zs. Uh, definitely probably doesn't even work for the company that his jacket oh, represented. 100%. So you can't even be like, this guy had a long day at work. He was just trying to suck back a few and ke you know catch up on his rest, which I can completely you know, understand and agree with. But uh, just, a, you know, just a tough look overall. 
You know, the napping policy in bars these days, it's it's a touchy one. You know, it's similar to racism across America. It is talked about a lot, and times are changing, okay? You can't just do what you used to do. You can't just nap at the corner of the bar in the in the bowl of peanuts, you know? You can't do that anymore, apparently. I'm just going to recap. You just compared racism to napping in bars racism in america okay to napping in bars oh yeah that's a lot better i'm saying times are changing okay i have been kicked out of that bar (laughs) twice actually (laughs) i I don't know if i've ever told the story on this podcast i mean you you might know it man i got time okay (laughs) I don't know if you know Um, this i kind of forgot to write podcast material in the week's time we had after we vowed to each other to start writing more uh, terrible friend, worst host. Anyway. Okay. But I'm, I get to this point and you've seen me where I get to this point of drunkenness where I decide that I'm good at pool. Little backstory here for you. I'm not. I would say there's a little pocket there that I'm sure everybody could harness. Cause I've definitely like played, you know, the billiards at the bar and been like, why am I so good? You keep playing, you keep drinking, you keep taking the shots then you're pretty bad. Yep. And so I'm getting to that point, and we're betting like 20 bucks a game. And I'm playing with like random strangers, just losing 20 bucks a game. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I like scratch on, like I scratch very early. And what I thought was a light pool tap on was actually pretty hard. And the end of the pool, the little cue at the top just goes, Pew! and spring loads off and just shoots across the entire bar. And, like, lands right near the bouncer. And he's just like, all right, dude, get out of here. I'm like, you know what? That one's pretty fair. And I'm like, walk it home. See you guys later. The next night. Okay. I go back. Well, you know, criminals are known to visit the crime scenes. I'm sober this time. And I go back to the pool table because my friends are playing. And one of the pool cues is resting on the table. And I go up and I sit on the high top table. And what happens when you sit up on a table, it moves slightly. And the pool cue slides, falls, and hits the ground. And it gets quiet again. And then I just lock eyes with the (laughs) same bouncer from across the bar. And he's like, again? And just like, get out of here. I'm like, you know what? We'll see you guys next week. He just toss you out like an NLB umpire. It, it kind of did the, the throw Oh, yeah. Motion. He was 35 feet away, and I was just like, you know what? what Whatever. <laughs> what year would you say this was? Give uh, it a guess. Uh, 2023? No, it was. Uh, <laughs> it was probably like, it was probably 10 years. No, nah, it was not 19. Uh, it was probably like uh, 20, it was 23. What year? 2022. Uh, so that'd be 2018. Matt, 20, 20. what is the math? I thought you could figure this out. I don't even know what the math is. All uh, right, let's say it's 2013. It was 2016. 2016. The pool cue bandit of 2016 <laughs> yeah. was a hot topic in the downtown bar scene. Have uh, there been any shootings lately at the bars that we speak of? No, but... Oh, wow. we are coming up on about a couple months free yeah. of... I don't want to say that the butterfly effect of me breaking to a two pool cues at that bar led to that led to a murder in the parking lot a double murder thank you um but i don't want to rule it out i'm saying there's a small chance okay okay well without further ado let's get into the main portion of no brains no headache podcast episode 180 are you not entertained are you not entertained okay Let's party. Refs were in the news this week. Big time. Uh, big one that came out. Kansas City Chiefs got called for uh, offsides. It was offsides, but it got me thinking. And everyone says it's like, oh, the Packers best player. And it shows a ref doing the Lambo leap. I've actually got into refing before. It was a short stint, but I do not envy them at all. I, uh, I played soccer my entire life, so I thought, hey, you know, it's an easy way to make a couple extra bucks. Ref. Those who can't 
play coach. Those who can't coach, ref. Honestly, that's pretty true because a lot of the refs in the area failed coaches. For sure. Um, but Huge drinking problems. <laughs> oh, yeah. I missed the, the rules meeting. That was like a four-hour thing to become a ref because <laughs> I was hungover. And they were just like, you know what? We're short on numbers. You pass anyways. And I was like, oh, sweet. I know the rules. I've been playing it forever. Turns out I don't know the rules of soccer. So I got to like my first game. And, of course, one of the other refs doesn't show up. So it's just me singular out there. Then all of a sudden, like right before the game starts, a guy jumps the fence and runs onto the field. Like jumps like a random fence, like nowhere near. And he like comes up to me like, what are you doing? He's like, I'm the other ref. And I was like, front gates. Like Thought you had a streaker. Yeah, something. like 30 yards away. And it's like, this is junior high girls. No one cares. But like at the got to the point where like I would be refing and I just wouldn't be paying attention. <laughs> like, like the ball would go out of bounds and like everyone would like look at me to like where I'm supposed to be pointing and I'd be like, uh. "Dude, I was at my nephew's travel ball game last weekend and at one point I looked over and their coach was just taking a phone call." <laughs> Like damn, <laughs> there it was a blowout. No. They were winning, so it's just like it's just playing Clash of Clans on his <laughs> <Yeah>. phone. <laughs> but I was like, I, I wasn't paying attention at all. And then like it, at soccer ref, and you have to run a lot. And like there would be times that it'd be like ten thirty on a Saturday, and it's like I'm so hungover, and like I get there, and I'm supposed to like run, and I literally just stand in the middle of the field. <laughs> I am not doing it. Like I maybe move like you're like, yeah, you're supposed to run like six to eight miles, like for every couple games you ref. And I'm like, I maybe made it a tenth of a mile. Doesn't sound great at all. Or like so hungover and I forgot water, and so I'm like drinking out of like a team's water spigot on the bench, <laughs> like just like a dog. Come on, give the ref some complimentary water, you know. Oh, it was so butter him up a little it, bit. You J want to call's your favorite it, or not? It's North Dakota high school girls JV two soccer. It's the show. If you're not bribing the refs, you're not trying. You don't care about winning. <laughs> I mean, it's well. Then you got like crazy parents that are just freaking out. It's like this is the lowest level of the lowest level that you can possibly get into take up a different sport you got to appreciate the overzealous fans in the crowd usually parents of the participants um and it's always it's always a spectacle it's kind of like us watching uh you know sleepy the clown get kicked out of the bar the other day it's always a spectacle and it's just like but as uh, as a ref you kind of have to be that person of mediation so to speak and it's not very comfortable then you don't that's the one place you don't want to be is involved in it and if anything you are the source of it as the referee but there would be like sideline refs where like something would happen and then they would be like oh i'm the head referee so then they would like look at me and they'd look at me and i'm like kicking the grass <laughs> like not paying attention i'm like huh <laughs> You're just laying on the ground smoking a cigarette. Oh, and then it's like it's the I, month you smoke six. It's I I keep the time too, <laughs> and so I'd be like, all right, we got forty minute halves, and then I'd be look down, I'd be like thirty two minutes, and I'd be like, you know what, <laughs> <laughs> half time. <laughs> just absolutely like I, I was historically bad, and then like the one time when I was drinking like a like a dog out of the the, the old Gatorade bucket, yeah. And I even went and asked the maintenance guy if they had any cups and they didn't. So, I mean, I was trying, um, but I like get home and I'm like, I'm going to take a nap. And I realized that I am so windburned and so sunburned. And like literally at that moment, I had maybe done it for like three weeks and I like texted the head guy and I'm like, I'm out. <laughs> <laughs> the old text quit. Oh yeah. Been there. And then he's like, well, if we need subs, can I like, keep you on that list and i'm like sure every single text i no, got I just already blocked your number yeah <laughs> lose my number would you say this might be a bold statement but would you say that you are perhaps the worst referee in north dakota jv girls soccer refereeing i would say i'm the worst referee of all time okay in north dakota like at one point i was coaching my cousin's like sixth grade soccer team and the ref didn't show up so i ref <laughs> 
I was one of the coaches and was just blatantly this biased. Organized sports, and it just says if you're playing in the backyard, of like, oh, my dad's refing. I wonder who's going to favor in the calls today. Oh, yeah. And I was like, and, and the minuscule amount of money, it was like $15 a game. It's not very much. It was not. I mean, maybe it was a little more of that, but like, I didn't see any of the money because it was like direct deposited, and I don't know my bank account password. So it was like, this is like the worst i don't think you need to know your bank account password to get stuff deposited oh yeah but i I never saw it like on a statement i never looked at the statements but yeah you should get your finances in line i'm thinking about it as a pretty poor person myself it's uh shocking how uh illiterate your financial um you know thoughts are <laughs> eyes closed head first can't lose uh, but that's what I got. That's what I got for uh, refing. <laughs> How many times, you know, when you're talking to somebody, maybe it's like at your office or, you know, perhaps at a bar watching some sleepy guy get kicked out four times by the militia started from the patrons. Uh, how many times when somebody says something to you and you like don't understand, how many times will you say what before you just give up? I'm pretty good at just like kind of looking at you like just kind of like agree or like trying to pick up context to it. But sometimes I get it completely wrong. I won't say what, like, I'll just be like, eh. so you're the, you're like the no timer. Yeah. I'm also pretty good at like multitasking unless I'm roughing soccer. Clearly. <laughs> so like, I could just be like, you were multitasking. You were hung over. Mm -hmm. You're keeping track of the time poorly, but you're keeping track of the time. And you're not only getting sunburnt, but wind burnt as well. That's four things. Yep. That's multitasking. Also, another thing. Like Trying not to puke, five. <laughs> if someone got hurt, you're supposed to stop the timer. Never did that. It was run time. Be like, like, they brought the ambulance. Oh, yeah. It was like, field. yeah, it was 35 minutes for an ambulance. Be like, you know what? That's the game. <laughs> it's a tie game. We go to overtime. Nope. No, we don't. <laughs> not anymore. <laughs> New rule. Be that ref to just make up rules just to favor your state of mind at the moment or like one time i showed up and it was like a really nice like game and i was like wow there's actually quite a few people here and they're like oh actually you're that game and it was like behind the bleachers like <laughs> no one was there and it's like a girl like kicking another girl and you're like oh yeah you know what that tracks let's just get let's just get off topic here because fuck it yolo we have both ran uh, Zambonis. Yep. You know, clean the ice at a hockey rink, hockey sheet. How good were you or bad were you at driving a Zamboni? And that, would the pressure, if there was like a tournament or, you know, like obviously a live game, not just a practice, would the pressure ever get to you? Hypothetically, was I allowed to drink on the job? Hypothetically, no, but you could anyway. Okay, then I was pretty good. <laughs> um, I really didn't care. That was like the one thing you'd be like, well, we got a big game this weekend, sold out. And I'd be like, who wants to Zam? Everyone's like, nah, I can't do it in front of the crowd. I'm like, fuck it. Sign me up. Um, I wasn't good, though. Like, at Would Zam. you miss parts of the ice? Uh, occasionally. <laughs> I just remember, uh, you know, starting out my Zamboni driver short career. Um, there was always one time where I could I would just miss like a little spot, but you could always recover and on your way back off the ice you could get it. Yeah. And we called it leaving bacon out there. Is that what the Bismarck, yeah, North Dakota yeah. Zamboni Drivers Association calls it? It's a we unionized. Not very well, but we did. Um it'd be like <laughs> Well, we had these old ass compressors too, so you had to sit in a like a chair. And then with stopwatches, and there was times where I would be like, oh, I wonder where this person's at. And they're sitting in the chair, and they fell asleep doing the stopwatches. What do you mean doing the stopwatches? So, like, when a compressor turns off to when it turns back on, you have to, like, sit there and time it. Why? Because they're old? It's, like, because it fills up, and then it dumps. Yeah, they were super old. Oh, I never had to do that. Oh, yeah. You, you worked at a nice rink. Yeah. Mine was pretty, the facility and the Zamboni were rather new. And you got to fill those suckers up with water afterwards, as you may know. Oh, I was. And it takes a while. I was so bad. At, like, you put the hose in, you start filling it up. And there'd be times where I'd be gone for like an hour. 
<laughs> I come back and there's just water everywhere. I only had it one time where like yeah, the whole shop part definitely had a little bit of water in it, but thank God there's like three garage doors you can open to oh, I, uh, let it drain out. One time I turned on the water and I literally walked across the street to a friend's house and started playing video games. <laughs> and I was like, shit. Got that, Monix? Nope. Great. I was the worst employee. Or I'd break into the concession stand and just eat a bunch of hot dogs. <laughs> How do you break in? Uh, I had a key. So oh, okay. Not really, but I don't think I was supposed to be eating all the hot dogs. Yeah, uh, my place knew better than to give us a key to the concessions because uh, I definitely would have just went in and helped myself and not considered that thievery at all. I would have considered it as part of my job, come up here, eat four and a half Snickers bars. Let's well, see, I would never take like anything that was counted. Like They never counted the giant thing of hot dogs or the pizzas. Or the nacho cheese. <laughs> you just have a bowl of nacho cheese and a spoon. Oh, God. Yeah. I remember I would uh, firehouse subs. Great subs. You ever had it? I don't think so. Oh, man. One sub I had after a few, I was like, hmm, I should maybe just, you know, out of curiosity, check out the nutrition facts. It was like, it was like 1,300 calories for a sandwich. It was big, but He's, I knew that I would have my, you know, my intake pretty much for the day. Your sodium for the next six months. But also after you do that, you don't really feel like working very much after that. Oh, I was. It's like, I'm going to sit in I this was chair and so, take a nap. I was so good at napping when I worked at the ice rink. In fact, I was, I would always open on the weekends at like 5 a.m. And I would open the rink and then I'd immediately go find a couch and fall asleep for like my next exam would be in like four hours. And at one point I fell asleep in this like big meeting room. Yeah. And I I had one of those too. I was in, I was on the couch in the corner fast asleep and I woke up a couple hours later to a full blown meeting happening (laughs) and they didn't notice I was in there. And so I like had to like pretend that I was like, I was like, "Uh, found my contact and then like walked out a random door. (laughs) Totally got him. See, I I would have no problem napping on the job. I think maybe that's just the mental side being like, well, you're getting paid right now to sleep. If I'm at the bar, you know, wearing my fluorescent yellow neon jacket with reflectors. That's where the line's drawn. Yeah. You know, you can't just, I, me personally, I don't know if I'd be able to, you know, sleep on the bar. But give me um, a sub sandwich fully loaded and a conference room, like, office chair, and me not giving a shit, as we have learned, that is also decreasing as time. It's like, fuck around and find out, but just as time goes, so do the shits given. And it's, at a certain point, we may hit... You know, we talk about rock bottom a lot on this show, yeah. and I am safe to say that we are drilling well beneath the surface. Okay. Well, that just reminded me of a story when you talk about being tired from eating a sandwich. One time we we had a wrestling duel and friend of the show, Josh, was like, totally should have just beat the crap out of this kid and lost. And our wrestling coach is just tearing into us. And he's like, Josh, how the hell do you lose to that guy? And without skipping a beat, he just goes, I shouldn't have had that turkey sandwich. (laughs) The turkey sub. Yeah, it was, it was like the tryptophan in it alone was made me sleepy. I was like, nope. That's something you don't say. Should have blamed the loss on the turkey sandwich. Why didn't I think of that? <laughs> just, it just comes to me and it's like, how the hell did you lose your match? I'm like, coach, I'm just not very good. <laughs> no, it was the turkey sandwich. Like the time I had the turkey sandwich backstage and I proceeded to have about 27 drinks apparently the turkey sub wasn't enough yeah to lead me to the promised land instead i just stumbled and bumbled yeah. promised land being not blacking out <laughs> promised land is just taking a dirt nap in the parking lot fair enough what kind of naps are there you know you got the dirt nap you got the bar nap you got the work nap toilet nap toilet nap we'll call that the elvis um it's like a normal nap. Have you ever taken a dirt nap before? Wait, I know you have. 
Yeah, multiple times. <laughs> uh, wedding in Montana. Drove out to the wedding. It was far out of town. Didn't really realize that I like didn't have anywhere to sleep. Fell asleep on the ground for like good four hours. That's Woke awful. up freezing. Crawled into the car. Slept for another two hours. Woke up, ate some hash browns, puked out, said hash browns, drove back to my hotel. Worthless idea of getting a hotel because I didn't even sleep there. <laughs> Definitely been there, paid for a hotel room. Did not even stay in it. All right, let's move on. No brains, no headache. Cleary's comments. What do you got? Oh, I thought you were the next one. But um, Stupid awards? Yep. Well, you just wrote down what? Yeah, well, we completely glossed over that. Oh, okay, cool. This is No Brains, No yeah. Headache podcast, people. <sighs> Weekly reminder, uh, that is also our insurance policy. If you don't like it, we don't give a shit. That's on you for listening to a show called No Brains, No Headache podcast. Congratulations. Happy to have you. Uh, so along with like the awards that are coming out, it's the end of the year. So everyone comes out with like the Forbes 30 under 30 list. Oh, cool. I found out that a lot you of think like- think we're going to make it? Absolutely not. Okay. Um, there's a lot of like local publications or like Midwest publications that come out with the 40 under 40. And so I got suckered into one today. That was like uh, North Dakota, South Dakota, Minnesota, like kind of that area one 40 under 40. And the first person on the list was 42 years old. Oh, okay. <laughs> Fantastic. I was, like, I was like, these lost all credibility. Another list I looked at one of the persons on there unemployed. Like not even self-employed, just nope. what, what, what would, what do they do in between jobs? What was their credentials? Uh, they used to work. <laughs> well, we all have. Yeah. <laughs> I, I was just like, okay, these, these lists mean absolutely nothing then. Yeah. I, you know, I was thinking about that, you know, trying to start businesses, being an entrepreneur in the area. It's like, oh, yeah, that should be something you should almost strive for, but it's definitely not if you know, like, the truth behind it. Can't people just buy their spot, too? Oh, 100%. You know, because these are magazines, publications, correct? Yeah, my brother made one last year because one of his friends nominated him as a joke. Oh, why don't we think of that? We, we should, should just start doing that. We should next year's. We'll be yep. 30... And then it says under 30, and then we will discredit the whole list, which would be funny in itself. That would be a funny joke. Yep. We Let's just, start discrediting every list yeah. we can. I think that's a grand idea. Or I just, thought I was going to be upset when you started talking about this. I'm pretty yeah. happy right now. Or, or, or maybe we come out with our own 30 under 30. That's just our friends that are like the drunkest people in North Dakota. That's an option. It's an option. Uh, you know, most people don't like to be public about their lifestyles, but not us. We are authentic. Okay. We tell you how it is. It's like, Hey, how have you been lately? It's like, honestly, just listen to my podcast. You'll be able to tell like pretty much what I've been up to. Listen to to this podcast. You You catch the innuendos. You have a pretty graphic, you know, image of what I've been up to. Matt was a terrible employee that fell asleep a lot and occasionally drank on the job. He also naps. And is a failed ref. (laughs) Yeah, failed referee. Quit refereeing after three weeks due to sunburn, windburn, and general hungoverness. Sorry, I can't do this anymore. I have no ambition. Jordan Weichel works Tuesday through Thursday, strictly. Thursday off at noon. It's like, oh, why didn't you make so as much money this year? It's like, well, I worked 40% less yeah. than everybody yeah, else. That so, would do it. Mm-hmm. so, I mean, kind of do the math, it adds up, you know. I don't know what you're expecting here. And and that's just that's just how it goes. You know, we are out here to scrape by. You know, don't, don't do more than you need to. You know, I was out to dinner the other day, and I, you know, there was a person there who, like, kept talking about seemed as if they were upset or frustrated that they were single. And I was just like, you know what? Who gives a shit? Why don't you just enjoy that for once? I'm great at giving advice, not taking it. Oh, 100%. But (laughs) I was talking not that I'm the same, that you're terrible at taking advice. (laughs) Great at giving it. You need some solid advice. You know what? I'll talk you. I'll give you a fucking motivational speech. If you want me me to get mad, then 
tell me advice and i'll be like that's fucking stupid <laughs> pretty much tell me the same ex- the next day tell me the same exact thing and uh you will see why i am the way i am but yeah it was just like you know what what why don't you just calm down a little bit yeah. okay. one of us needs to settle the fuck down <laughs> yeah so i don't really know where i was going with that but everybody just chill out yeah. okay like, like you just care too much and the, the level of care that's the theme here today the level of care if you're watching on youtube you can see i'm doing a downward driving motion with my hand everybody go to youtube subscribe watch the goddamn podcast that's what you asked for and we did it cares are going down all right should we move on yeah Okay, this got weird. You know, smoke a little grass or drink a little ripple, crow like a rooster, maybe challenge the mayor's son to a gentleman's duel as uncouth against God. Might be out cold season here, Matt. Uh, you also just told everyone that you're great at giving advice and then simultaneously told everyone to stop caring and essentially give up. Yeah, no, that's <laughs> great advice. Everything, like you see on the internet, all the cheesy quotes, you got to take them with a grain of salt. All right? Tomorrow's going to be better. No, it's not. Tomorrow's a new day. It's like, yeah, that is just a generic (laughs) general observation. The sun will rise tomorrow. Yeah, unless the fucking world is done for. Unless Canada has forest fires again, then why not? (laughs) The best time of the year, and it's fucked up by forest fires. Son of a bitch. All right. Um, like I said, uh, didn't really prep a whole lot this week. That's my bad. But what I did spend my time doing is binging another TV show. Yeah, I was like, you were like, I'm working 40% less. Well, you got to spend your time doing something else. Um, you've seen the show, HBO show, True Detective. I watched it right when it came out. Did you watch all seasons? No, just season one. I I heard to not even bother with the other ones. And I'm not really here to talk about True Detective, but it's just how do you have a TV show that's the season one True Detective? Check it out if you haven't. It's amazing. Only eight episodes, so it's it's pretty manageable. Um, how do you write such a downfall from season one to season two? How is that a recipe for success? Then they even made a third season. They're how com- does that they're, happen? They're coming out with like a fourth. Really? Pretty soon here. Well, unless it Let is... Let me fact check that because I could have just made that up. Also, uh, NFL referees make $205,000 per year. That's the tab I pulled up. According to Techopedia, thought I'd share... Uh, well, did, did you see that one sideline ref that, like, got his leg snapped in half? Oh, for sure. And then he got, like, an autographed jersey. It's like, wow, yeah. 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 Definitely... <laughs> I don't have health insurance, so this should really help pay for it. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, what is that guy thinking? He's like, well... Gonna make a couple extra bucks, go to this NFL game, and hold a yardage sign, and then just two hours later, and his legs just... Yeah, not ideal. If True Detective is actually making a season four, I'm pretty much just not gonna watch it, unless it's Matthew McConaughey and Woody Harrelson and essentially the same storyline. There's a lot to unpack. Isn't a... Oh, it comes out January 14th. True Detective Season 4. Yep. Okay. That's confirmed. Who's in it? Um, Anybody good? Is it Woody Harrelson and Matthew McConaughey? Woody Harrelson's cute ex-wife? Uh, the Woody Alexand- Alexandria... No, that would be Woody Harrelson's uh, first mistress in the yeah. show. Uh, who he stalks, for sure. Uh, Jodie Foster's in it. Okay. Okay, I could probably, you know, a little fucking Silence of the Lambs vibes. Yeah, it's the only person I know. I need to see pictures. I'm kind of autistic. Kind of. A little Clarice vibes. I could, you know what? I could get behind Jodie Foster. I'm willing to give it another shot. Yeah, I mean, it can't get worse. But you can't just cut somebody off like that. Addiction is sweeping the nation, and True Detective decided to write one of the best single-season TV show plots ever. And and I, then just a drop-off. I, I think that's why, like, if you think of, like, other shows that have a great first season, it's really hard to keep up with. And shows that do are all-timers. You need to 
The first season needs to get you hooked, but you need to kind of build off of that. Like The Office and Parks and Rec. I don't know why I'm comparing True Detective to Office and Parks and Rec, but the first season's terrible. Very terrible. Like, when I rewatch those shows, I start at season two. You ever see the picture of The Office when they're in the little conference room meeting, and it's all those, like, cast members from season one that were just, like, pretty much extras? I don't they, think they so. have a whole picture. There's like a whole room of people, and they're only there for season one, and then they don't even die die off. They just from one season to the next, there's just an overhaul, and then there's Creed. You know, maybe one of the greatest like characters of all time when he shows up just covered in blood, and he's like, "Oh, it's Halloween." That is lucky. <laughs> <laughs> Claire Reese vibes. True Detective season four. Oh, it's wild, dude. I got I got pretty hooked on it. It's yeah, it's one of those that like much like Mayor of East Town, it's like, oh, I started this at eight PM and I finished it at five p- five AM. Well, you know, Monday's optional. Um and I have an, a, a confession to make. I have still been putting off the final episode of the Sopranos. It's I can't come I can't do it. I'm avoiding the closure, even though that's what I seek. I can't do it. That's that's fair, though. I have a friend that hasn't watched the last three episodes of The Office, and that's been, like, damn near ten years. Yeah, I just know there's an end there. You know, you get, you get so, you know, juiced up about the storylines and the characters, and you know there's more, and you know, oh, man, I can't wait to see how this plays out. What the fuck's going to play out? Nothing. They better, they better tie up every loose end in the show in one episode. Otherwise, you feel like I held in a sneeze for, I, forever. I have heard that uh, Sopranos ending is actually pretty good. I actually have heard that too. But uh, I am just avoiding it. I just, you know, how do you write such a good season one and then drop off after? But now I know we got Jody Foster, a little Claire East action coming in. That'll be sweet. You're welcome. All right, moving on. Uh, so I thought I went to a fake college. No, you do. Then I discovered this college. Uh, it was. It's been making headlines the last couple days. North Dakota State's men's basketball team won one hundred and eight to fourteen against Oak Hill Christian College. What's this Oak Hill Christian College about? Um, guess how many students they have total. 990. 100. Okay. <laughs> and if you look up, it's just sad. Like what their basketball team looks like. They're not even in the NCAA. They're part of like the National Association of Christian Colleges. And they have lost games to D2 schools, NAIA schools by 70, 90 points. Like, go wolf back, right? Yep. Um, And then it gets kind of even sadder because I went down and they've won two games, which just shows a lot about who that other team they played um, was probably the women's basketball team at the school, um, which has five players. They've won both those games by a total of three points. (laughs) Yeah. And they lost to Valley City State University by 63 and then again by... 92. This reminds me a lot of uh, you know, us playing oh, basketball yep, in our 100%, youth. 100%. Like if the teams would have kept trying. But they have no one on their team is above 6'6". Six, six. They have like one guy, I think. And their head coach is also a faculty advisor and instructor for the business program. And I don't know how they even scheduled a Division I program or how NDSU even decided to play them. Yeah. Uh, where was the game at? At NDSU. Yeah, NDSU is going to travel to Bemidji. Or maybe it was a neutral site. Um, 
it doesn't work in basketball where good programs will pay shitty programs to come play for a little tune up. So. I'm pretty sure they were just like, anyone want to play this day? And then this guy's like, you know what, guys? I don't have class that day. So yeah. <laughs> I, can. I don't have a lot going on. There's only 100 students, and not all of them are business majors, so I don't do a whole lot. Also, and then, like, another big thing, it was um, at halftime, it was, like, 68 to 5. What do you say at halftime? If you're that coach, we got to start shooting threes. My mom forgot orange slices. We forfeit. <laughs> One of our players forgot his socks, so we forfeit. When's the last time a good old fashioned forfeit happened in a major sports game? Uh, when DeMar Hamlin died? I don't know if that was a forfeit. That was a mutual agreement to end the game. I'm talking about a forfeit. Um, I don't know. But yeah, was a, this college is flipping bananas, and I like went and looked at all their other sports teams. They have a cross country team, but it just says "to be determined." Like when you click on it, it's like, "Yep, there's it's it's coming." I guess it's quite the scheme they're running. It's almost like the it's movie tw- accepted. It's twenty thousand dollars a year to go to the school. It's like fourteen million dollars a year. A hundred students. Yeah, it's like. I don't even want to do that math. Probably um, about two. Yeah. 20, I guess. So how many zeros we got? Yeah, I don't care. Um, but the girls basketball team, five players. So if anyone's hurt, can't make a trip, not great. The girls volleyball team, six players. I think that's how many are on a volleyball. I feel like in the games they won, the two of them, barely, it was probably similar to your um, coaching soccer situation where, like, one of the refs didn't show up, so one of the coaches just had to oh. suit up. They get like, ah, oh, the scoreboard doesn't work. It's like, that's okay. We'll keep track of it on by hand. And it's like, what's the final score? And it was like four to six. And they're like, 72 to 73. It's like me <laughs> yeah, keeping. the coaches made up a score. Yeah, me keeping score playing against myself in the driveway. That does make, those are made up scores. They won the one game 90 to 88 and 74 to 73. Sounds pretty made up to me. Yeah. Um, they do have a soccer team, and um, by the off chance, every single member of the basketball team also plays for the soccer team. So, And I also want to know how the guy from Hawaii ended up at Oak Hills Christian Academy college in minnesota you know some things in this world just don't make sense and it's not worth your energy trying to figure it out all right should we uh get to some facebook marketplace and facebook marketplace and get the hell out of here you know us we like to find all the crazy nonsense that happens on the classic platform of facebook marketplace matt where are we I, I actually have here. one I didn't send you because I already sent you one today, and I didn't want to be a nachos. I didn't want to be annoyed. Those are good nachos. I had nachos like five times last week. Um, Is this the where we're studying though? Yeah, that's fine. Um, Go, you do yours. Yeah, uh, man wins big scratch off ticket, and this guy's name is Ricardo Vasquez, and he Ricardo looked, and. His first, he's getting interviewed by the news, and he says, I first thought it was $100, but then there were more zeros. Oh, my sweet Jesus. I'm on record saying the lottery is a tax on the stupid, and I was 100% right. This guy's a mouth breather. So what actually happened? He won $100,000, but he thought it was $100. <laughs> you know, I heard uh, one time that if, you win big money if you have the option of remaining anonymous. You should. Also, if you win big money in a lottery, you're probably going to spending a lot on lawyer fees. Well, this uh, guy got sure seventy one thousand dollars cash after taxes, which leads me to believe he's in a pretty low tax bracket if they're only taking twenty nine percent. I don't know. It's a pretty solid number. But also, you don't want to come out like that because your family and your friends will always ask for money then. And part of why I just want to randomly get rich someday, I want to see who comes out of the woodwork. And I'd probably roast them for a while, kind of make them feel a little bit guilty. But all right, here you go. Like, get the fuck out of here. Don't come back. And then 
you know, if you if you want to have Tony Soprano whack him, if you want a hundred thousand dollars and you got seventy one thousand dollars cash, see, I just don't think that's enough to even go worth asking for any money. (laughs) And I I would feel bad just being like, hey, can I have some money? One of those guys that wins like four thousand dollars and quits their job, and then they like realize after a month they're like, oh no, I'm out of money. (laughs) (laughs) Shit. (laughs) Did not think that one through. Um, I feel like you and I could could be in the classic situation if we ever like gotten I don't know a, a situation similar where you like jokingly ask the person for money and they're like, "Well, what's it for?" And you're like, "Dude, I'm just gonna go down to the casino for a couple of days." They're like, "All right, here you go." Yeah. And you're like, "Fuck, now I gotta go to the casino." What's it for? Take and be honest. Again. Drugs. All right. <laughs> <laughs> here you go. Yeah, uh, you got to count the zeros yep. on the lottery ticket. I thought I just got a lot of zeros Once again, on again, the best way to get closer to winning the lottery is playing it, yep. it turns out. Uh, huge factor. Not many people, including myself, don't consider. But uh, I think my money is better spent elsewhere. Yeah, hit me with this leather wedge. All right. Bizman, Bismarck Mandan online garage sale page. Uh, Marianne posted... A leather wedge from a sectional sofa. Top opens for storage, also two cup holder. I can see that. Thank you. I used it between two big chairs. So, for all of these of those listeners out there, if you could imagine for me a sectional couch, but this lady is only selling the corner wedge. Couple things. Yeah. <laughs> what? <laughs> What if the what if there's some guy out there who happens to have that ex same couch, and he's like, I've been looking everywhere for this forty dollar wedge. It looks like one of those wedges that doesn't even uh, hook into anything. It doesn't actually like connect to other pieces. You kind of just gotta jam it in there and then throw it in the yeah. corner of your room and hope that it. One of those couches move. where it doesn't actually connect, so you fall asleep and then it like pushes apart and then you wake up and your ass is like on the ground. I just I love the extra tidbits they added. You know, said where it's purchased, used it between this and that. I appreciate that. I don't think that's going to push me over the edge to call you up. And they're asking forty dollars. I feel as if this is a five dollar item. And if you're taking the time to post a five dollar item, just burn it. In, yeah, in your burn pit, make a burn pit. It's it's bad. And well, and she's like, I put it between two chairs, and it's like, okay, I'm. Obviously, if you look at my house, I took care of, I got rid of my dining room table to put in a ping pong table. I'm not a, a, I was going to say graphic designer, interior designer, but I can't imagine this looks good just randomly sitting in your house. No. Waste of time, Marianne. What are you thinking? Nobody wants your wedge. No. Uh, McDonald's? Uh, McDo- yeah, McDonald's is la- launching a new spin off restaurant. In Illinois, named after little-known McDonald's character, and it says they're secretly launching it, and it's called Cosmics. couple things. If you're secretly launching it, why are there news articles about it? And if you're also secretly launching it, don't put the McDonald's logo on the side of the building. Yep, yep that is the... It's a dead giveaway right there. You know, call it the Golden Arches, one of the most recognizable logos and brands in the world. And that, that's a fact. We, there's no disputing that. It's the smartest thing we've said on this episode. That's the most factual thing we've said today. And you know full, full well that they, the menu is the exact same at this place <laughs> as a normal McDonald's. Like, they're not changing a thing. Got to watch out for it. Oh, this guy was pretty upset. Hey, Bismarck, stop signs are not optional. The contributor said, well, we're at it. Can we stop creating imaginary right turn lanes when there, in fact, isn't one? You can wait five more seconds. You need to talk to this guy about his punctuation. He needs yep. to put some commas before and after, in fact, for more effect. Which, th- this is on a website, on a page called Reporting the News. 76 comments. All of them were very mean. 
I, you know, I got to be honest. I am actually trying to take a step away from the social media for this exact reason. I think you're getting dumber depending on what you follow. And it's just also a waste of time. Scrolling is a big time waster. I'll admit it. I fall for it a lot. I'm always like, hey, I got to, I have something saved that I need to reference right now. Or I'm going to post a reel or I'm going to do this. I'm going to do something productive. And then you just kind of get sucked into the old scroll. And you got to watch out for it. I will be honest. I one time posted on this page anonymously. Oh, me too. And I posted like maybe some of the most innocent thing. Like it was like, where do you get the best hot dog at in town? And the first comment was like, kill yourself. (laughs) I was like, what? (laughs) (laughs) Go fuck yourself. uh, What? (laughs) I was like, what do you want me to do with that? I was just trying to get a hot dog. (laughs) Gentlemen, I have a very simple philosophy. What you shove up your ass is your own business. Looking for a hot dog. Go fuck yourself. Uh, it's it, it. If someone says please, no rude comments. You might as well just put a take a Facebook ad out and say please roast me. Meanest comments possible. Like no wonder you're getting a divorce, you dumb bitch. And it's like you don't know this person. Um, I think that's it. Yep. All right, Matt. Uh, that's a great episode one hundred and eighty. Are, are down. We got one more, then we're going to take a little Christmas break, give you and us, as our loyal listeners, and us as the host, a little bit of a break, just a little FYI. But, Matt, in the meantime, say we have a listener out there, and they're like, oh, my God, this show is so friggin' good. I friggin' love these guys. They're friggin' awesome. How do they get more involved? How do they get more connected? A lot of ways here. So everyone has an iPhone. You can... Open up your podcast app. Search No Brains, No Headache. We'll be the first one to pop up. You scroll down, go to the bottom. You hit five stars. You hit one stars. You hit write a review. You say, Matt sucks. And then post that. You whip out your checkbook. Write us check for $40. Write all the zeros you can think of. Send it to us. Boom. And then if you want to get involved, any social media platform, just type in No Brains, No Headache. We'll pop up there if you really want to get into it. NBNH Podcast, we're there. We're posting some dumb things. And that's that's just kind of what we do. Episode 180 in the books. Episode 181 up next. Roast of Jordan Weichel. Uh, Friday, December 29th. Y'all are invited. Hope to see you there. Well, it's a- yeah. This is a freestyle at the top of the dome. Here we go. Can I do it again, 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 again? I do it only once. Again, 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 again. I do it only once. I go down that river slow to the place I shoot like Carmelo. I'm living my life and we go hard. Floating on the river in a party barge. And I see you on a sea dude. Your shirt was white and it was see through. Please use your spray, no mosquitoes. Every time you found me, it's a free throw. Go.